within my spirit that lies dormant in other people. See, when you haven't been adopted as a child, you don't know your birth parents, you feel like sense of rejection, they didn't want me, who in the world gives up their children? I don't know, man. I, I gotta let that story go and try to figure that out. But that, those are the things that bother me, that did still bother me. <laughs> I'm adopted by a couple from High Point, North Carolina. And my adopted father says, I don't want anything to do with you either. My adopted mother goes on to get married four more times. And I'm sexually abused by her, her second husband. She also goes on to have over 50 foster kids in and out of our home, so I'm growing up in a dysfunctional home, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, God knows what's coming in and out of the house, day and night, you have no idea. People in and out, it's like a revolving door. At the age of 17, I witnessed the murder of a classmate of mine, right in High Point, North Carolina, over five points, probably almost a year ago, 20 years ago, 17, 19 years ago. About this time of year, school had just started, second week of school. The end of my senior year, one of my best friends committed suicide. This is somebody I spent a lot of hours with, spent a lot of time with, talked about our dreams, what we wanted to do. He was an athlete, I was an athlete. Spent a lot of time talking about that. I get to college, I'm a little confused about what happened at my house, so I'm over here at this beautiful Wake Forest campus, everything's supposed to be really great for me, right? <laughs> it's not. Because that's when who you are starts to be like, well, I'm not like them, because they got two parents. Oh, I'm not like them, because their whole family's here to drop them off at school, and it's a big celebration. You know who dropped me off at school? My good friend. My mom wasn't there. You know how when people go to college, it's like a big deal, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. I had a trash bag. I had a trash bag. Put my stuff on the bed and just went to the gym and shot because that was the only place I could call home. So I had these experiences in my life. We all got layers of stuff. And on the outside, it could look really good. That basketball stuff looked really good when I was playing. It did look really good when I was playing. So I should be honest with you. It looked really good. But there were things happening. And at times in my life, I struggled. And I've had to be able to share that with my players first because I saw their struggle. I had to give, I had to liberate them and validate their pain. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I, this is what happened to me. But I wasn't trusting in my full self. Believing in my full self. I, said, I think everybody in the world probably needs a message like this. I'm going to wake up every day and do that. I'm going to wake up every day and inspire the world, make it versus their advantage. And let them know that those things, there's a power inside of you that was only there because of those things, because you've been tested, because you felt like the walls were closing in, because you've been in the valley a little bit, those things, if you really, really embrace it, can be the power that causes you to change your world and everybody else's around you. That's what I'm on a mission to do. The second thing is to enlarge your vision of what's possible. Maybe you haven't gone through what Adele Harris has gone through or what somebody else has gone through. Maybe life is pretty good, but you're just thinking way too small. Anybody in here still dreaming? You guys got dreams? Mm -hmm. Things you want to accomplish? Raise your hands high, because I really like to be in the presence of dreamers. And if you're not a dreamer, if you've given up already, because that is, that, is that is a huge issue, is that some of us are already thrown in the towel. <laughs> oh, this is it. This is going to be my life. Stay far away from me. <laughs> stay far away from me. I don't want to get infected with that. And actually stay far away from your children. Actually stay far away from your nieces and nephews. Because you know what? They still got dreams. They still believe in something. They're using their imagination. They still want to create. They still believe. Make sure you keep your energy away from them. So they can go on and transform the world. And do some special things. Because adults, in my opinion, 19 years on a college campus, are the ones that mess up kids. Kids don't mess up kids. Adults are the ones that remind them that they're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You sure you can do that? How are you going to get that done? Adults are the ones that remind kids of that. Kids feel like they can do anything. They feel magical. 
I'm one of those people that decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind myself of how magical I am. I don't care what my mom said or what my dad said or what other people have said. Something inside of me reminds me. I know. And that's kind of going back to the first statement I said to you guys. Do you know that you're a part of one of the best producing goodwills in the country? You better act like it. You better know who you are. That's magic. Sometimes I have to remind myself, do you know you were the person who came up out of that house and got a full scholarship to Wake Forest University and walked across the stage with a degree? You better remind yourself of who you are. Mm. Do you understand that at the age of 31, you were one of the youngest Division I head coaches in the country making a six-figure salary when your mom never made more than $35,000 a year? You better remind yourself. Sometimes you gotta remind yourself. And I don't care how far back you gotta go. You better go back there and remind yourself who you are. I like to say, I went to this conference and I got reminded about this. This is what I spoke about last week. I got reminded about this. I, I study a guy named Bob Proctor, who's a personal development coach. And I, because that's what I do, personal development, so I'm in that space all the time. And I go to this conference and I'm sitting there and Bob is on stage and he's talking to everybody and I feel like he's looking right at me. It's like you're at church and the pastor's like, did he know what I was doing last night? Why is he talking to me like this? Bob said, listen, if you don't like who you are, you don't know who you are. He kind of said it real casually, like shame on you. I was like, yeah, shame on me. I don't know who I am. Because I'm infinite potential. We all are. The power inside of you has never been calculated. They cut you down the middle. They ain't gonna find no limitations. They're not gonna find, they're gonna find unused talent. There definitely will be unused skills. But not the fact that you didn't have the ability to go do it. Not the fact that you couldn't learn any skill. You can go add two new things this week, and in five months, have them added to your whole situation, and now maybe be able to go make more money, maybe be able to go help your children better, maybe be able to go do something else. There is no limit. There's no limit. You don't know who you are if you think there's limitations. That's it. You don't know. So I'm here to just remind you of who you are. And I don't care what the circumstance on the outside looks like right now. I don't care, because that's temporary. What, was, what your circumstance was 10 years ago. Maybe some of you can close your eyes and think about what my world looked like 10 years ago. That's not here anymore. It probably looks a lot different. That was temporary. What's happening now, at any point you can decide, that's temporary. The way my bank account looks right now, that's temporary. Thank God. I'm gonna have with you. I'm gonna add some O's and some comments. How do I do it? Add some skills. Maybe my communication skills need to be better. I'm a speaker. I work on communicating every day because I want to be really good at it. What are you trying to be really good at? Maybe it's just being a great father. I wish I had somebody who wanted to sit and say, I want to be a great father to her. I want to be a great father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better grandfather. Whatever it is, because what, you, what you've given up on yourself, let's just say right now you've thrown in the towel. I had, I had a meeting yesterday morning with uh, someone from over at Wake Forest in the athletic department. He made a point that just kind of woke me up. I was telling him that I wanted to earn more money so that I could go into my community of High Point, which is struggling so much, and use my voice, but also use my money to make some significant changes. But I gotta get around some people who can help me understand how to make more money. Because, you know, where I'm from, I don't have a lot of people who got tons of money to teach me how to do that. And he said, you know what? Whoever raised you, your grandmother, your mother, the people in the community, and Dana, they know how to make somebody who can make millions of dollars. Wow. So maybe you ain't making it, but what about your granddaughter? Can she do something? Can you help her become the type of person that acquires the communication skills or knows how to treat people or walks in a room with a smile and her shoulder back and she believes in herself and she's confident because the world is opening up for women like never before. I just throw that in there. <laughs> the power of women is about to be significantly impacting the world over the next 20 years. So maybe you're like a spark that lights her on fire. 
Because I got some people in my life, and I thought about that. I was like, yeah. Because my grandma worked in a factory for 25 years. She didn't make a lot of money. <gasps> Boy, but she helped raise somebody who was going to. She helped raise somebody who was going to. Just by loving me, supporting me, and everybody else who did. So maybe you're that person. Maybe you're the spark for somebody. I'm sure you can think about one or two people in your life, and maybe you don't like the way they treated you. Mom, dad, <laughs> mom, aunts, uncles, I don't know. Somebody, like, man, they could have done a whole lot better. It's because of them. You're probably blaming them now. It's because of them. I'm in this situation. I never had a chance because of them. How about look at yourself like that for somebody else? Because I got a list of people. It's because of them that I did make it. It is because of them. Being intentional. Being deliberate. Holding me accountable. Challenging me. This guy right here was the first person that said, you're a leader. You need to stop acting like those are other kids. I don't know why you act like a knucklehead so, so much. <laughs> Just tell me. Do the first one to say, you're a leader. Why? Why are you? When are you going to start acting like it? I mean, anytime now. Stop Go doing dumb back. stuff. Go view back. I remember that conversation. Yeah, it took a long time. before. We... <laughs> but I do remember that. But you know, nobody else told me I was a leader. Nobody said I was a leader. I go back, I grew up in a home, I never heard the word I love you. I didn't grow up in a love-based home. It was a little more like fear-based. My mom was, boy, she dropped that hammer. Why oh, this kitchen ain't clean? <laughs> she didn't play. But I had a grandma who, the second I walked in the door, she just lit up like I was the most impressive thing ever. She loved me enough for 10,000 people. What if she didn't? And there's a hole, there's a gap there. She said, I love you first. On this earth, 20 years before I heard anybody else say they love me. <clears throat> On this earth, 20 years or 15 years before somebody said, you're a leader, stop acting like those other, you ain't like them. Maybe you're gonna be that person to tell someone else in your family, they're not like, stop acting like that, you're not like them. And I don't know if they'll change their life because of your messaging, <clears throat> But they can't act like they didn't hear it when you say it. They can't act like they didn't hear it. Once your brain takes in information, it does not go back to its original form. So I'm speaking to you today about knowing who you are, owning your outcome, taking responsibility, dreaming big, got throwing the towel. When they put you in the ground, then it's over, okay? Which is all sure to happen for all of us. We're gonna leave here. But while we're here, Live full, die empty. My man Les Brown says that. Best motivational speaker ever. Live full, die empty. You can't act like you didn't hear it today. You can't act like you didn't hear about integrity and how to load the truck right. You can't act like you didn't hear it. You heard it. But if it's too late for you, or in your mind you've made up that it's too late for you, please do it for someone else your neighbor, someone in the church, the community. That's part of what you do here in your service at Goodwill. You show up with a smile. Why? It's important. It's what we do. We serve the community. We're a brand. It's a part of who we are. I just challenge you to transfer that into the rest of your life. Smile at your kids when they walk in the door. It changed my life when my grandma smiled. <laughs> it did. Because I don't know if my mama ever smiled when I came in the door. It was something wrong. So understand the impact you can be making. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share these messages with people. And be real and authentic. I ain't perfect. <laughs> I ain't perfect. I've been depressed. I had my times I drank too much. <clears throat> I actually got arrested in 2009, DUI, for, drove down one way street, downtown Asheville. Blood alcohol level three times the legal limit. I actually did my uh, community service time in the Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 